I am Prof. T. C. Vengadeswalu, Department of Biotechnology, Nance Foundation for Science, Technology and Research. So today's lecture topic is production of citric acid. So the contents in the topic, introduction, microorganisms used for production of citric acid, raw materials, methods for production of citric acid, biochemistry of citric acid production, recovery methods, factors affecting citric acid production, Applications of citric acid summary followed by references. The citric acid is a weak organic acid and is found naturally in citrus fruits, especially in lemon. The molecular formula of citric acid is C6HI7 and has the and has the melting point of 153 degrees Celsius. The concentration of citric acid in citrus fruits. It ranges from 0.005 mole per liter from oranges to 0.30 mole per liter in lemon. Citric acid is first isolated by the Chile, a Sweden chemist, the, from the lemon juice in 1784. The citric acid has a good commercial demand in food and pharmaceutical industries, so it can be used as a natural preservative. It is added as a natural preservative to give a, a sour taste to the food and the soft drinks. So the production of citric acid can be produced in two ways. One way is the natural process, so which is produce the citric acid naturally from the citrus plants, especially lemon and orange. Another way is the synthetic process, so where you can use the chemical synthesis by addition of enzymes and other method is biological fermentation process by adding microorganisms is preferred process for production of citric acid. So the microorganisms used for production of citric acid, so which includes the bacillus, lycanfomase, orthobacter, paraffinase, you can use corinibacterium species and from fungal side you can use the aspergillus niger and yeast you can use candida species and you can use Aravia species. So among all, the Aspergillus niger, a filamentous fungi, is preferred inoculum for commercial production of citric acid. So because it has several advantages, handling the Aspergillus niger at lab scale is easy and it has ability to ferment a variety of cheap raw materials and it can produce the high quantity of the citric acid. So you can see the digital illustration of the Aspergillus niger view and you can also see the grown Aspergillus niger on malt extract agar plate which is indicated on the plate black in color. So the raw materials used for production of citric acid, so you can use the beet molasses, coconut oil, corn starch, you can use date syrup and glycerol and you can also use other materials, carbon rich materials if you run the submerged fermentation process. So if you run the solid state process for producing citric acid, we can use the brewery waste, cotton waste, apple pomace, pineapple waste, wheat brawn and sugar cane waste can be used as the raw material for producing citric acid. So the industrially we can run the two modes of the fermentation process for producing citric acid. So one is the Koji fermentation process, Koji process it is a solid state fermentation process and second one is submerged fermentation process. So irrespective of the fermentation process there are three phases which are common for producing citric acid which includes the preparation and inoculation, fermentation and third one is the recovery of citric acid. The Koji fermentation process, I told it is also called it as a solid state fermentation process. It was first introduced in Japan. So this method, it can use as the agro-industrial residue as the substrate for producing citric acid. So in this process, preferably you can use apple pomace, sugar cane and beet molasses as the substrates. So which are first soaked in the water. After that, you can remove excess water and pH and moisture content of this material medium you can adjust to the 4 to 5 pH and you can see the moisture content 70%. So then this material is subjected to the sterilization process. 
So the sterilized starch paste is now inoculated with the spores of Aspergillus niger. So it can be spread as the aerosol or it can spray the liquid a suspension on the surface of solid substrate. Then the inoculated medium is now transferred into a large trace of 3 to 5 centimeter depth and then they can incubate it at 25 to 30 degrees for 3 to 7 days. So they are the, during the process the growth of Aspergillus niger is accelerated by adding alpha amylase because whatever raw material you have selected that is rich with complex matter, addition of this amylase it can hydrolyze the complex carbohydrates into a simple sugar then your citric acid biosynthesis is more accelerated by addition of this NJ. So during the citric acid production the pH drops to below 2. So at last the released citric acid is extracted from the fermentation tank. So the advantages of solid state fermentation process it has a low energy requirements and it produces very less waste thus you have a less environmental concerns. Other, other process for producing citric acid is the submerged cultivation process. So if you run this process you can use beet molasses as the preferred raw material for production of citric acid. So we can see that the material should contain 12 to 15 percent of reducing sugar content. This is very much essential for formulating a medium. And we can all other nutritive salts which includes ammonium nitrate and also potassium dihydrogen phosphate needs to add it. And pH of the raw materials you have to maintain in the medium at 5.5 to 5.9. So the fermented submerging process you can run in a single stage or multi stage process. So where you can uh, generate first the hydrophilic spore suspension. It is a, a seed fermentation process for producing the aspergillus niger. So where we can duplicate the aspergillus niger first takes for 9 to 25 hours at 32 degrees centigrade. And the mycelial aggregation formation in the medium which are indicative that the citric acid production is started. So this aggregate formation usually you can observe after 24 hours of the inoculation. So once the production is begins, the pH of the medium it can be reduced from 5.5 to 3.5 we use the beet molasses as the substrate and there is a reduction of pH to 2.2 for sucrose substrate. So the fermentation process you can run for 6 to 8 days then at last later the citric acid can be recovered and purified from the mycelium. So the citric acid production process is the aerobic process it requires adequate supply of oxygen. So the aeration rate you need to maintain 0 0.2 to 1 BVM. So the 80 percent of the world citric acid production is now obtained by running submerged process because of advantages it has a low investment and maintenance cost less compared to the surface process and the disadvantages of this process is high cost of energy and more sophisticated technology required which in turn requires the a specialized staff for running the process. So we can see the biochemistry of the citric acid fermentation process. So we can observe in a, a biochemical pathway here the glucose is a predominant raw material for producing citric acid. So it undergoes to a glycolysis by a series of reactions and then you will get uh, two molecules of the pyruvate. So now this pyruvate is converted to the acetyl CoA. So this catalysis requires pyruvate dehydrogenase enzyme complex. So this complex is present on the mitochondrial membrane of eukaryotes. So where this enzyme complex releases this acetyl CoA as the product into the inner side of mitochondria. So in the mitochondria, the acetyl CoA condenses with oxaloacetate to form a citrate. So this reaction is mediated by an enzyme citrate synthase. So where you can see in the pathway, aspergillus niger at pH 2, there is a release of citric acid. So this pathway, it is indicated that production of citric acid is, is pH driven process. Once fermentation is completed, now our citric acid is ready in a reactor. So that you need to recover by using different methods, 
so we can recover by precipitation so in precipitation process the step one is first you need to done the filtration for separate for uh, culture broth so we have to wash the mycelium because it contains 10% of citric acid the filtration process we are going to done by using a uh, rotary vacuum filters so during the fermentation process there is a release of some unwanted by products like oxalic acid is also synthesized so it can be removed by precipitating by addition by with the lime ph3 then you can add the calcium hydroxide to the filtrate until the ph of the solution becomes 6.8 now the calcium hydroxide neutralizes the broth and forms the insoluble precipitate of calcium citrate so now this calcium citrate which contains about 74% of citric acid then the citric acid is washed and filters to remove the contaminants then we can add h2s44 at the temperature 60 degrees now our calcium citrate is now reacts with h2s44 to form a calcium sulfate you can call it as the gypsum and further filtration is required which is uh, which is microfiltration or ultra filtration is to be done to separate the calcium sulfate and free citric acid so the mother liquid containing the citric acid is now treated with the activated charcoal to decolorize the solution at the end we can do the evaporation and crystallization to produce a crystals of citric acid the citric acid recovery you can also done by solvent extraction method where you can use the tertiary amines which are effective extractants for recovery of the citric acid so the they can take up advantages of the low ph of the fermentation medium where the citric acid present in its protonated form so the other method is the citric acid recovery by adsorption so where you can use ion exchange resins for selective extraction of citric acid so we can use the pvp resin that is polyvinyl pyrolidum so this resin has high selectivity towards the citric acid so that we can uh, recover more than 90% of the citric acid from the fermentation broth citric acid recovery it can also done by using in situ product recovery method so this in situ product recovery method you can also call it as it is a template induced crystallization process so where you, there is a addition of templates to the fermentation solution as a, a specific surface so upon which the solute preferably crystallizes so factors affecting the production of citric acid so you can see the carbon source uh, glucose and sucrose are widely recommended carbon sources for production of citric acid so the optimal sugar concentration range you should see that it should contain 10 to 14% and sugar concentration level below 2.5% will not produce any citric acid and nitrogen salts like ammonium salts such as urea ammonium sulfate can be used they can decrease the ph so which is a crucial for citric acid production and the addition of the lower concentration of the alcohols like ethanol methanol which is very much essential so addition of ethanol it can enhance the biosynthesis of citric acid so we can see here the ethanol it can uh, enhance the activity of citrate synthase so other factor is the ph the ph below 2 is optimal for production of citric acid and ph of 2.2 is best for for growing fungi so the aeration system is very much essential because process is aerobic the adequate supply of oxygen which also reduces the overall fermentation time so the concentration of oxygen must be about 25% of saturation at the start of the process it must be 0.1 to 0.4 vvm otherwise so it can produce the excessive froth in the culture medium so you can see as a short the raw materials and their effect on citric acid production the carbon sources the sucrose glucose fructose they can source the positive effect on citric acid production the phosphorus sources addition of the potassium dihydrogen phosphate in the range of 0.5 to 5 g per liter which increases the citric acid production 
the nitrogen sources ammonium nitrate ammonium sulfate peptone are preferred sources for production of citric acid ph you need to maintain less than 3 depends on the species and the addition of trace elements zinc copper and magnesium sulfate is also essential in lower level and low alcohol i told methanol ethanol and n propanol is very much essential to accelerate the biosynthesis of citric acid applications of citric acid so in the use preferable in food industries the reason is which can enhance the activity of antioxidant preservatives so the citric acid can also used as emulsifying agent in ice cream so in the medical field citric acid can be used as blood anticoagulant the reason is citrate chelates the calcium and reducing the tendency for blood to clot so in cosmetic field citric acid can be used for producing or making astringent lotions and hair gels etc so in environmental field for uh, removal of metals you can use citric acid the reason is it can it can act a chelating agent so we can see the sequestering heavy metals including radioactive isotopes in beverages also the citric acid is used because the reason is it can act as acidulant and ph stabilizer the summary steps of citric acid production the production process requires the different raw materials and other important parameter for production of citric acid is the inoculum and you have to run the fermentation process for 6 to 8 days at the end of the process your citric acid is ready now the released citric acid can be recovered by doing filtration so for recovery you have different methods you can use precipitation solvent extraction and you can use adsorption where you can use a a selective resins like pvp resins and you have a third method for recovery of citric acid is the in situ product recovery where you can see the addition of the templates for crystallization of citric acid so these are all references needs to follow for production of citric acid you can see the typical view of the industry for producing citric acid thank you